Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And today we're gonna to talk about a very interesting and actually very important topic, and that is healing after a facelift. I just recently received an article that uh, highlighted Sharon Osborne's facelift experience. Her surgery was done in October and her immediate response to the surgery says, I had a full facelift done in October and I look like one of those effing mummies that they wrap with bandages. Later on, she was concerned about the fact that her eyes did not look the same. You've got to be effing joking. She said to the surgeon, I looked like an effing cyclops. All I need is a hunchback. Sharon Osborne is 69 years old. I do want to say at the time that the story was written, it was also noted that most of those quotes that she was expressing were during the healing process, the first week or two after the healing process. And the article goes on to say that she was feeling better about the changes as things were settling down, etc. So that's great news. Now, let's break things down a little bit here. So there definitely is a difference between a good outcome and a bad outcome. So let's not underestimate the importance of lining yourself up for success. And what does that basically mean? I mean, you wanna be in the hands of a highly experienced facelift surgeon. And we've had videos that I speak to you about how to choose a good surgeon, what to look for in a uh, good facelift surgeon. So there's that aspect. And we're also gonna talk about what is the normal healing and what to expect. Now let's talk about bad outcomes. 100% there are bad outcomes in plastic surgery, just like there's bad outcomes in any other type of, of surgical field. Even dentistry, there's bad outcomes. The bottom line is no two surgeons are the same, no two techniques are the same, and there are some times when outcomes don't turn out the right way, and sometimes that's related to the surgeon, sometimes that's actually related to just the healing process, but at the end of the day, there are bad outcomes. When those bad outcomes do happen, there is a consideration for need for revision, um, you know, touch-ups, et cetera, et cetera. And we're not gonna go into that aspect, although that would be a nice topic for a video in the, in the future, but let's talk about normal healing, assuming the person is gonna have a good outcome. What it sounds like to me in Sharon Osborne's experience was that she wasn't properly prepared, perhaps, for the immediate post-operative look that she's gonna have. Now, I try my very best to prepare you all and my patients for what that's gonna look like. We've posted lots of journey videos, right? Where we take people through each step of the way. You can check those out on my channel if you haven't already. So you see intimately what, you know, one day, two days, three days, four days, five days, up to a couple months, even a couple years after a facelift or in our practice, we do the vertical restore, um, it looks like. And that's very, very important to mentally prepare and get ready for what's to come. Because if you're not ready for what's to come, what you see immediately after surgery can be extremely, extremely disheartening, scary, and overwhelming. And having said that, having said as hard as we try in our practice, because we know how people feel, we get tons of patients, at least probably 60 to 70% of our patients in the first three or four days, kind of freaking out, kind of worried. Is this gonna stay this way? Is this normal? Am I gonna be one of the bad ones? Am I gonna be the exception? So there is a lot of emotional roller coaster going on during the immediate post-op because at the end of the day, it's your face and we can understand that and we can certainly empathize and understand with what Sharon was going through because even, like I said, in the most deliberate ways that you can prepare somebody, sometimes it is overwhelming. So take these following words and these following messages to heart because if you're gonna have a surgery, this will help be in the back of your mind. I think there's a little bit of an assumption that having work done on your face or having work done in plastic surgery, you know, sort of realm is sort of lighter than other types of surgery. I mean, when somebody has an ACL repair or has back surgery, they know they're out for a little while. They know they're going through physical therapy and rehab and all this other stuff before they can become functional again. But for some reason, people underestimate the healing process of facial surgery and specifically facelifts. So it's not like going through a time warp or a fountain of youth sort of a thing where you just come out the other side looking amazing. You've got to go through a process because surgery is by definition traumatic to the tissues. I mean, we've disrupted things and as a result, the body needs time to heal. So this is what happens. You have surgery. 
Typically on the first three to four days following surgery, there's a phenomenon called third spacing. Third spacing is basically where the capillaries and the blood vessels and the tissues are leaky and they're letting fluid build into the tissues. So as that happens, face gets swollen. The more swollen it gets, the more weird it looks, especially over the areas of the cheekbones where most people um, have relatively you know, high cheekbones and any swelling over this area makes the face look really wide and that's normal. That's completely normal because your body is pouring out fluid and doing that. Some people may bruise. Bruising always accentuates the look of, uh, of having stuff. If you've had stuff done to your eyes, everything's going to be puffy. Your eyes are going to appear smaller. Um, everything's going to look congested. Things are going to look pulled. They're going to look weird. Now, that gets worse over the first three or four days. So you wake up after surgery, you look at yourself and you're like, huh, okay, this is not too bad. And then they actually get worse over the first few days. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, when does all that start to turn around? Typically, right around the fifth or sixth day, there is a shift. And again, I'm, we're talking about our practice experience. So, you know, you might need to extrapolate based on how other people do things. But typically around the fifth or sixth day, we talk about it almost like as it's the first day of true healing. The swelling is starting to Absorb, the tissues are starting to, to soak up some of that swelling. And then you wake up day after day after day looking better and better and better. Now, by two weeks, typically in our practice, patients have turned the corner. They look reasonably good. They don't look perfect by any means, but they look generally good enough to go into a grocery store and not scare the young children. And one of our patients brought up this term. She said restaurant ready after two weeks. And that's where I would say maybe 80 to 90% of our patients fit in. So for people to wanting to go back to work, etc. Typically, that's a good amount of time to take off and get back to work so you don't lose too much time away from productivity and your work, etc. But when do you really look great? Well, honestly, that healing process continues to get better and better and better for up to a year after surgery in, in many cases, sometimes even longer. Now, it doesn't mean you look like you're healing. A lot of times, I mean, after a month or two, you look at the person, you're like, how could this get better? But then you see them six months later and they actually do look better in soft and subtle ways, not in major ways, just generally recovering. There are some basic things that we know are going to take a long time. So for example, numbness over the tissues, that's a three or four month, sometimes six month um, recovery process. A hardening over the tissues, that takes a little bit of time for it to recover. What about incisions? Incisions, now that's a whole nother story. No one comes out of surgery looking perfect with, from an incisional point of view. Incisions have two phases. They have the, the inflammatory phase of, of healing where a lot of blood supply, a lot of collagen is getting into the tissues and starting the healing process is basically mending that fence that was caused by the, uh, the scalpel cutting the skin. And then there's the reorganizational phase of wound healing, which goes up to a year, year and a half or so after surgery. So you can count on your incisions looking red and looking a little bit angry, a little bright um, for at least two to three months after the surgery. And then that gets better slowly over time. Now, what do people do during the meantime? Well, they use a little bit of tinted sunscreen, a little bit of, of mineral makeup over the incisions just to take away some of that redness and give the tissues time to heal. So all of this stuff you need to be prepared for. When it comes to eyes, generally speaking, at least in our practice, we don't do anything that's going to disrupt the shape of the eye. We purposely don't do anything to do that. Now, there are some techniques like canthopexies and things like that that actually can change the shape of the eye. I personally don't do them. Um, I don't find them to be super necessary. But the bottom line is no matter what you do, if you do surgery around the eyes or on the eyes, eyelids, etc., your eyes are going to change shape temporarily until the things get settled. Now, of course, again, back to technique, everyone's got a little bit of a different approach. In our practice, I always say the eyes are not never going to change shape. And you can see that in our before and afters, they always ultimately look the same, but minus the age and changes. So those are some of the things to keep in mind. I think the most important take home point here is you have to trust your surgeon. If you chose wisely, if you've taken the time to research and you feel a good, a good sense of comfort about the surgeon, trust them, trust them, trust the process of healing that they present to you, trust the feedback that they give you about your healing process. And ultimately, if you take on a very relaxed, emotionally free role during the healing process, I promise you, you're going to heal twice as fast as if you are very uh, emotionally sort of uh, worried and constricted and, and anxious about the healing process. Those patients in our practice, we can 
count on are gonna take longer than those who are just, ah, it's all good, I trust you, Dr. Karam, we're gonna, I'm gonna be fine, this is kind of like a, a phase, etc. Those patients heal swimmingly, and we never uh, have to, you know, deal with some of the prolonged healing measures that go along with uh, the healing process. So keep all of that in mind. It sounds like uh, Sharon Osborne is starting to turn the corner, at least uh, at the time that this article was published. She's starting to feel better as things settle, which is great news. I don't know anything specifically about her outcome or the surgeon she chose, etc. cetera, um, but just to say that uh, giving her and the uh, her experience the benefit of doubt, she'll most likely be, be fine, hopefully fine. Guys, thank you so much for your attention. This is really, really good, um, important information for any of you considering to have uh, facial surgery, take this message to heart, save this, share this with friends and family who are also interested in this process because this information can really help make the entire process emotionally and mentally a lot easier. If you like this video, guys, take, take a second and hit like. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be uh, bringing a couple of videos a week. If you have any questions at all, comment below. I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, and again, share this with as many people as, uh, as you feel would benefit from it. Thanks so much, Dr. Mir Karam.